Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Artificial DM. Today we're going to be taking a look at an RPG horror story where Minmaxer took control of the game. I'm Minmax, so I named the party by Little Sun Trail. Hey everybody, this is the story of why I stopped playing D&D 5e with the group that introduced me to the game. For history, one of my best and oldest friends invited me to play with him in a game he was running online with some of his friends. I decided I loved the game and wanted to keep playing, and my buddy found he wasn't able to keep up with the prep time, so somebody else in the group took over running his homebrew campaign. We will call this new DM the Munchkin, for reasons that will come up later. Munchkin starts his campaign and wants all of us to give in-depth backstories. He wants a minimum of two pages of backstory, so I wrote up just shy of five. He calls me out on it, which is fine. I deserved it. It was my second character. I was still learning things. We start playing, and one of our first quest lines culminated in us being stuck in the middle of two giants fighting, with us doing small things to guide the battle along. It ended with one weakened giant left for us to finish off, so we were doing our combat stuff. When it came to my turn, I said I wanted to hit the giant with my warhammer. Munchkin says I'm too short and can only reach up to the hip, and can't make a solid hit from that. I told him if I can reach the giant's hip, I can reach the giant's genitals. And that's where I'm going. Everybody laughs, and it ended up being the killing blow, and the hammer was then nicknamed the Dick Hammer. Next morning in game, the original crafter of the hammer said he needed it so he could make some updates to the hammer. When he brought it back, it was shaped like male genitalia, which everybody thought was hilarious with the history of the hammer, and sealed in the name of the hammer. A few days after that session, Munchkin tells us he's going to stop running the game for a bit, but another person at the table, who we will call DM because he DMs for the rest of this story, has been working on a homebrew campaign and is ready to start running it for us. We all are fine with it and write up characters for this campaign. We all are working for a bit on them, and then Munchkin, who was not the DM, tells us all that we need to have a more serious tone. He specifically says, Your bard can't be named after an actual rock star. You should play something other than a guitar disguised as a lute. Play something real, like a flute, and you can't have a weapon named after a dick. Now, he was the one that named that previous hammer, and he was the one that really pushed that joke by changing the way it looked. So I was a bit miffed about that, and decided to see what I could get away with. I was already planning on making a bard. I'm always eager to express bards as artists, and showing arts other than music. So I was making a swords bard who was raised as a chef. I basically made him into a traveling hibachi chef, and he was out and about looking to learn new types of cuisine. I chose spells specifically to fit that theme, like heat metal to power the grill top and whatnot. My original musical instrument was going to be drums, and I was going to have it be that he was drumming on the grill top while he cooked. Seeing as I had to play something real, like a flute, I switched to that, and named my character Jethro Tall. Go ahead and google that name real quick if you want to see how brazen I was being about this. Which, if you look up Jethro Tull, the very first image is a rock star with a flute. Now, I brought a swords bard for a specific theme, and was absolutely picking theme over optimization. I was an effective bard, but I did not take the most powerful options. I wasn't interested in those. I was interested in this hibachi chef of a character. Munchkin came in with a paladin multiclassed with warlock, so he could have dark vision and cast darkness on himself so he was always in a cloud of darkness and had advantage on every hit. When we had combat, he would do that combo and then run to the boss of the battle and start crit fishing. The rest of us, for the first few combats, chose to take out the other enemies and let him do his thing, but we started having our own synergies and quickly got to where we could wipe out all the minions while Munchkin was trying to solo the boss. If we entered the darkness, he would screech at us and tell us to leave so he could have his moment. Edit. Taking the Warlock Invocation Devil's Sight allowed him to see through magical darkness. He didn't just have dark vision. Munchkin had a habit of metagaming like crazy. When we went into combat, he would immediately try to identify the monster and pull up the stat block, then blurt out resistances and vulnerabilities, HP amounts, AC, anything he could get. We told him to stop, because we weren't playing to win. He would say, well, the information is out there for us to use. Why not use it? Munchkin also wanted to do everything that everybody else could do. 
In a party of six, there's a general understanding that you let people handle the things they made their character for. He wanted to be the tank in plate armor, the sneaky thief, the party face, and the knowledgeable one, and he would refuse to let somebody else do something if his character could possibly do it. It was extremely frustrating all the time. We decided to make a party fund, and the expectation was that everybody would put a certain percentage of their gold into the party fund. We would then use that fund if we needed to purchase anything bigger, like ship fare or a MacGuffin. Cool, I'm down with that, and was putting my money in, and nobody was having to pay for travel or food expenses. But I was always running light on gold when it came to buying personal supplies. There was a magic item for sale in a shop that was perfect for my bard, but I couldn't afford it. Somebody else in the party lent me the gold for it, and we made a deal that I would give him portions of my loot until the debt was paid. Wouldn't build up interest or anything. After I had given the amount back, the deal would be done. Everything was totally fair. It was great. Then, somebody started mocking me for not having enough gold. I just left it as general teasing and didn't pay much heed to it. Until the next session, when we were going to buy passage. I opened up the party chest and went, Hey, there's not enough money in here to buy passage for everybody. We are going to have to go make some money. Turns out, I was the only one that had been paying into the party chest. Everybody else was paying for their passage out of that fund, and nobody but me was paying into it. Of course it ran out of gold. It had one six of the amount it was supposed to have. So I flew off the handle, told all of them they owed me big time, since I had been paying their travel expenses the entire time. Everybody apologized, but nobody paid me back, and everybody just sort of stopped talking about the party chest. DM then started asking us about a name for our group. We all started talking about names based on our first adventure together, and we're pretty okay with it. Munchkin, however, would only talk about a specific name. He wanted us to take the name of the mercenary band his character had been part of in his backstory. It was a cool name, but didn't fit our party. The name he suggested was all about getting gold and being greedy, and the rest of us were all playing fairly generous characters. So, we told him no but he refused to accept the name we put forward. A DM said the decision for a group name had to be unanimous, so we had to keep arguing with this doofus that would only let us have a name if it was the one he specifically chose. This escalated into him saying, If any of your characters could feasibly beat mine in a one-on-one, -on -one, then I'll give up the name. He didn't want us to actually fight his character, he just wanted us to explain what we would do that could possibly beat him. I told him that I would just cast heat metal on his armor, so he would always take damage every round that I concentrated, and he would have disadvantage on everything. You have to see me. If I get darkness out, you can't cast heat metal on me. He then refused to believe that my character with much higher decks than his could possibly beat him in initiative, despite me consistently going before him in other combats. He eventually conceded that it was possible for me to get heat metal on him before he put up darkness, and goes... But then you still have to do damage to me. Heat metal won't kill me fast enough. Okay, then I'll cast Shatter on the darkness. You won't be able to see me! I don't have to. Shatter just says to pick an area. And since you always cast darkness on yourself, I just have to pick the area at the center while I'm outside the darkness. Should catch you pretty easily that way. Well, you shouldn't have Shatter anyways. It's not a bard spell. It is actually. And I took it as part of his cooking show. He casts Shatter on eggs when he throws them in the air over the grill, and I've used it a few times in combat already. If you didn't think I should have the spell, you should have said something then, rather than waiting until it could cause a problem for you. He never conceded defeat on this, because he couldn't comprehend that his character built for one-on-one -on -one combat with the most grizzled, grimdark roleplay possible could possibly be defeated by the unoptimized bard that picked his spell specifically for how he could use them to cook. Like... He just could not fathom that somebody did something better than him without trying to do it better than him. Shortly after that, we had a combat on a boat where we were ambushed by bandits in half plate by night. We all scrambled from sleep to go handle the threat, and Munchkin goes, I sleep in my armor every night so I'm fully armored. Okay buddy, sure, of course you even min-maxed your sleeping, but whatever. I remember in this combat, there was a bandit I could reach near the edge of the boat, so I ran over and used some sword sparred flourishes to push him off the boat, thinking this would mean he was dropped in the water and would drown. I felt pretty pleased with myself for finding a creative way to neutralize that threat. 
Nope. Diem said he landed on a lifeboat that had just happened to be below him. He didn't fall far enough to take damage either. He was just knocked prone from the fall. So on my next turn, I declared I wanted to go down there, intending to flourish him over the side again. So I dropped down. Uh, you take X amount of damage from falling. Why? He didn't take damage. I shouldn't be taking damage if he didn't take damage. Uh, you took damage because you meant to do it. He didn't. So, the person that was ready for the fall took damage, when the person that wasn't ready for the fall took no damage. Yeah. Well, then, I don't want to do that anymore, because that's bullshit. I want to cut the rope so the lifeboat falls away. Okay, you are now floating away in the lifeboat with the bandit. No? I meant instead of jumping down, I wanted to cut the rope. You had already jumped down, so you would have to climb back out first, and you didn't say you wanted to climb back out first. Q Munchkin. Hey! I thought we said we couldn't call out 1v1 battles anymore! It was around this time that I started thinking I didn't want to play with this group anymore, specifically Munchkin. The rest of them were cool. One guy was the one that got me into D&D, one of them was in my wedding, one guy was hysterical and could make anybody laugh. One guy inspired me to be a better player and showed me how to do it. All of them were great, and I would love the opportunity to play with them again. But Munchkin was awful, and I couldn't stand him. I shared my disappointment with the other players that I liked, and pretty unanimously got told, Yeah dude, he sucks. So, what do you do in this situation? You talk to the DM, right? One of the players said he had already done that, about the metagaming. DM said he would handle it. And the very first combat after that, Munchkin started with, If you don't like metagaming, don't listen. But these guys are... And went right into his metagaming again. I have my suspicions that Munchkin and DM were in a relationship and were open with everybody else about it, based on interactions outside of the game as well. So it just seemed like the DM was always going to cut Munchkin slack on things the rest of us disliked. Then we are leading up to a session, and I realize that I am dreading playing. Like... Looking for reasons to bail on the session levels of dreading. I had the presence of mind to realize that wasn't a good thing, and figured I should talk to the DM about it after the session. About 20 minutes into the session, somebody said something to the effect of, Man, it would be cool if we had a pool of gold that was just for when we needed to purchase things for the group. I pointed out that we tried that, but nobody would actually pay into it. The group got quiet for a bit, and then Munchkin goes, Well, one person did. But they were the poorest person, so what was even the point? It was the final straw. I was over it, and I didn't want to keep playing with him. But I didn't want to ruin anybody else's fun, so I just kept playing for the session, and decided I would talk to the DM after the session. We were doing a dungeon crawl, and I decided that my character should just... die. Then I could tell everybody else, Oh shucks, guess I'm out early tonight, and be done with it. But the DM suddenly decides that I can't be killed. I would intentionally leave myself away from the group in dangerous locations. I would position myself horribly. I would cast AoE damaging spells with me included. Basically, everything you can do to get yourself killed. None of it worked. We end the session, and I tell the DM I'm backing out and give my reasons. He asked what I wanted done with my character, and I said he would go back to his home place. The group happened to be near where he came from, so it wasn't a big stretch. I said my character would let the party have his magic items, with the stipulation that the PC that helped my character buy one of the items got first dibs, and I texted that player to let him know the arrangement and what items I had so he could mull it over. A month or two later, the DM messaged me and said the party wanted to hire my old character as a chef, and wanted to make sure he had my permission to use my old PC as an NPC. They had come into money and were purchasing a keep, so they wanted to have my old PC be the chef there. I thought that was pretty cool, and made me feel like I had made a character the party liked so much, they wanted to keep it around, so I said sure. A while after that, I was hanging out with one of the players, and asked how the campaign was going. He knew my reasoning for quitting, so there were no hard feelings about that. He said, Well, Munchkin hired your old character, and then started yelling at him all the time. He would challenge him to combat all the time, and arm wrestling competitions, and your character would lose every time. So that was cool. Munchkin couldn't outdo me, so he had to take on my old character when they became an NPC. Real mature. Shortly afterwards, one of the good players, the one that inspired me, let's call him Monk, got into a spat with Munchkin during a session about something. I don't know what. 
Munchkin then went silent for a bit. He had muted himself over Discord. He was still playing, but he wasn't talking to anybody. Eventually, he turned his mic back on and blamed everybody else for him being silent. As the session went on, he kept disregarding Monk and everything Monk had to say. He was straight up ignoring the guy. Eventually, somebody pieced it together. Munchkin had muted just Monk and was continuing on as if he wasn't there. They called Munchkin out on it, and he threw a hissy fit and left the session in the middle of combat. The campaign fell apart after that, and my close friends in the group told me that they hadn't heard from Munchkin since he got called out mid-session. To me, sounds like good riddance. They all talk about how much better the group is now, and how they all are having more fun. I'm glad they all got their happy ending with it, and that the worst member eventually left. From the stories I hear of their games now, everybody is having a blast. I just hope they get to keep their happy group and keep having fun with the game. An enabling DM and a main character syndrome player. Sounds like a bad dream team. I'm glad that OP was able to recognize that even though he likes these people, he needed to step away from the game. Hopefully the DM doesn't cave in the future and bring Munchkin back, and maybe OP is able to join his friends in a future game. I do also have to say, I love the idea of the chef bard using his stovetop as a drum and going around the country collecting ingredients. It's awesome. But anyway, that's what I thought about it. I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this story, please leave me a like, or maybe subscribe if you want to hear more tales just like it. That's going to do it for today, and until next time, hope you feel inspired.